Hello, dear parents. Topic for today is worm infestation in your kids. After the deworming program launched by the government of India, many parents have this doubt whether we should regularly deworm our kids and whether the tablets which are given by the government or in the schools whether they are right for my kid or no. So let's try to understand what are the types of worms, what clinical features can they have, what can you do and how to prevent them. So let's go through it. So what we'll do is we'll understand how these worms enter our body. So lot of different variety of worms exist in the world but the very few or the most common ones let's try to understand how they come into our body so mostly round worms or hook worms usually get into the body after the kid does something called as mud eating or it is called as pica wherein your kid tends to put a lot of mud or sand in the mouth what usually happens is this soil is contaminated with eggs of these worms and on entering in the body the worms grow and they cause these problems associated with worms so also sometimes you must have felt that my kid doesn't eat mud yet he gets them or even in the higher socio economic status people get worm infestations so how do they get what usually happens is whenever you are using vegetables you must have seen that there are small worms roaming around them you might take them out but there can be small eggs deposited on them especially plants like carrots potatoes or green leafies which are very close to the mud if not cleaned well then the mud sticks to it and this mud may carry the eggs of the worms so ingesting of these things can cause hook worm infestations or round worm infestations while flat worm or tape worms usually enter the body through contaminated food or undercooked food especially undercooked meat while pin worms the very small ones enter the body through toilet seats or dirty linen it may also enter when people are sharing beds or in institutions or in hostels so sometimes even families have the same infestation in uh, all of them sometimes pets especially dogs cats can carry these worms on their body and kids or adults handling them can get them occasionally it is seen that people who walk barefoot on sand or beaches can if they have some small cut wounds on their foot can also be the source through which the worms enter the body drinking contaminated wa- water is one of the major source so also swimming in contaminated water can all be the causes so these are the various causes or ways through which these worms enter our body now what complaints or what symptoms do our kids have when these worms attack us mostly sometimes they are very obvious like a child complaining of itching over his buttocks or sometimes parents have noticed that these worms come out of the anal region or they might have found out these worms in their stools but majority of them are not so obvious sometimes usually the kids have dull aching pain or abdominal pain or your kid might be restless but so many times it might not be so obvious like decreased concentration in your child or the child not able to remember things maybe the effect of iron deficiency which can be caused because of worm infestation these worms compete for the food in your stomach and they can lead to malnutrition and deficiencies so sometimes in children who are malnourished or growth retarded or stunted worms could be one of the causes sometimes they can cause 
rarer uh, symptoms like a jaundice which may be caused by worms rarely respiratory problems can also be caused by worms so worms don't come with only one variety of complaints very commonly diarrhea or dysentery may be secondary to worms parents may notice a unusual or foul smelling stools which may be one of the signs of worm infestation so the complaints of worm infestations vary commonly abdominal pain peri in leaching excessive irritability in your child must alert you towards possibility of worm infestation so how do we diagnose worm infestation of course the clinical features which we explained now are the important markers sometimes if it is not so simple straightforward we might order some tests like a stool examination to find out eggs of these worms occasionally some blood tests are advised rarely imaging or ultrasound is advised to identify these worms but most commonly they are straightforward now having understood what are the ways to identify them let's know how do we treat them of course the simple straightforward only mantra is albendazole now dear parents please listen carefully albendazole is available over the counter as bandy zentel bendex or many other names you must identify the name as albendazole this can be used for kids above 1 year the national deworming program advocates using this for kids from 1 year to 19 years every kid has to be dewormed twice in a year sometimes it is you advise annually but for most it is biannual based on the socio economic status the hygiene status we decide annually or twice a year now dear parents please understand the dosing is simple and straightforward that is for all the kids less than 2 years 200 mg and for all those beyond 2 years it's 400 mg so for every kid beyond 2 years the same tablet is useful now please understand that a huge tablet cannot be chewed by kids they can occasionally cause choking so what we advise is this tablet can be chewed like a chocolate it can also be crushed and used so for the smaller kids they can use either the syrups or if at all they are prescribed tablets it has to be chewed or crushed and had let's understand that albendazole is poorly absorbed if taken empty stomach it is best absorbed with a fatty meal so we advise that any time you are taking this drug it has to be taken after a full meal and once it is taken it is a drug which has very minimal side effects but sometimes few kids might complain of some amount of nausea occasionally vomiting sometimes it can cause some rashes or itching but these are very minor if anything beyond this you have to speak with your physician now so we as we understood this is a very safe drug available over the counter having known the do- dosage and having understood that it has to be used for all of our kids let's understand that for on every deworming day we shall use this tablet without any fear having understood that this is a over counter drug some people are at risk of some side effects with this drug so especially pregnant women should not consume this tablet some kids who are on steroids or on anti convulsants can have some interaction with this drug so they should be careful certain fruits like grapefruit 
is known to increase the toxicity. So these are some precautions. Now let's come to the last and the most important part that is how do we prevent this. Understand that none of the home remedies are having any good effect on preventing worms. It is hygiene or cleanliness which has the most important role. Clean drinking water and well cooked food are the cornerstones of preventing worm infestation. Now please understand that we cannot prevent our kids from playing in mud but we can as much as possible supervise and avoid them eating the mud and if they are having any cuts or wounds on their body we should avoid direct contact with soil. As I have explained some of the vegetables might carry mud particles or worms and their eggs. So thorough washing is the most important step. Now coming to a very important point that is so many times the pin worms appear in the bottom of the kids at night. They cause them to be restless and they lay eggs around the perineal region. What happens is some of these eggs are lying on the linen or on the beddings. If you come and just dust those linen, what you do is spread the eggs all over the room. So we should be very careful in such situations. If your kid is having these problems, make sure you frequently change the beddings. The clothes have to be washed in warm or boiling water so that you destroy these worms and you don't dust the linen outside. Especially sharing of linen, clothing, beddings with other siblings or family members could lead to cross infections or spreading of the infection. The another important point is phenomena of auto infection that is your kids itch their perineum and put those hands in their mouth playingly and knowingly this will lead to further increase in the worm load so preventing your child from itching cutting their nails regularly avoiding nail biting frequent hand washing before and after going to the bathroom and throughout the day all go a long way in preventing this. Parents in, of such kids should give particular attention to washing the bottoms. So I think through this small series what I try to do is make you understand the most common causes, what are the symptoms and how you, you can prevent it. So the take home message is it is a very common problem. It affects all groups of people belonging to various social economic status. It can only be prevented or treated with a single dose of albendazole. And this has to be given by annually. And let us go home with the thought in mind that this is a very safe drug and it is not going to cause any side effect. And I hope after this all of you will not hesitate to buy today and take a tablet tonight. Thank you.